He's done it again. Here he comes. Wait a minute. How did he do that? I don't care. I'm just glad he did it. The Warriors are on. Welcome to OSW Review, the old school wrestling video podcast, filmed in glorious Scrabble fashion and encoded in glass processing. We chronologically critique wrestling storylines, pay per view by pay per view. It's your boy Wonder, Jay Hunter, and allow me to break the ice. It's our very own Mr. Freeze, Mr. OC. Video. And our answer to Poison Ivy, V1. What's the crack? I don't rub you and you get a rash. <laughs> <laughs> The, the, the dirt, the grime, Steve. It's OSW 102 Fall Brawl 98 Warrior Games, and it's coming up right now. Welcome, Noggers! To be neither here again. How are you doing, V1? Not too bad. Cade le crack. Cade le crack? The crack is 90. <laughs> OZ, how's it going, mate? Ah, uh, you know, same old. Same, same old, old, same old. Oh, wow. Last episode, we sent out the call to help our bra OSW composer, Ryan Bobbill, <laughs> <laughs> to help raise funds for his wife's life-saving cranial surgery. And in under half a day later, after the episode dropped, they've exceeded their goal. Ridiculous. Just everyone rallied with their tweets and shares and getting the word out. It was fucking amazing to see. And it happened so quickly. You guys are amazing. Do us proud. Aww, so yeah. a, a winner is all of you. Yeah. You don't have to wait till the end of the episode to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see. Yes, sir. Another day. Go on. Another dollar. Yeah. Another dollar. What about it? Another OSW Yay! Yeah, Have a look what John David of Maryland has like soiled his body uh, with. My uncle lives in Maryland. Yeah. Ooh. So, we have got... You, by the way, both of you guys are going to get absolutely smashed out of it. Oh, it's all of you know, it's Maryland. Is it Maryland? <laughs> I think so. Is it? I, I, I don't know. Well, Maryland is way better, though. Well, my uncle lives there and he calls it Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So, on his left arm, and he's wearing a mask in the photo. So it was obviously done quite recently. Could be a ninja, we don't know. <laughs> and he has got a Randy Savage OSW symbol tattoo, where Randy on his t-shirt has the letters O, S and W. No mistaking it, it's an OSW tattoo. Congratulations, sir, it looks awesome. Another one in the books. Oh, in the pocket. Out of sight. I love this picture. Isn't this like one of the first bits of artwork that you got done for OSW? Yeah, uh-huh, this was a freebie by uh, Bamanon, actually. Ah. You know, he, he just, you know, he loves the show, he did the logo for it, and it's like, fuck, that is really good. Yeah. Get out of my dreams and onto my hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. It's fucking huge. Like you said, this is an OSW tattoo. No arguments, no ifs, ands, or buts. But it's not on a butt. So, four out of ten, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Take it back. No, it's awesome, mate. It's so bright and colorful as well. So, um, break out the old boy key. Push your way through the hay and let's uh, <laughs> see who's he got rustling around his stable. <laughs> He's got a boy stable. Right? <laughs> Number five, Val Venus says he made him laugh with the porn star gimmick. Yeah, solid, a solid boy. You know what they always used to say about Val Venus? A solid hand. It's such a backhand compliment. Says so he's not exciting anyone, but you know, put him in the ring. He's he's not going to. He won't anything. injure you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, that's that's what he is. 
congrats on the Spooge t-shirt as well. No. <laughs> <laughs> Cut, lacked, and ready to unload. <laughs> so you're telling me that if one person wears that, the other person wears the AJ t-shirt with the mm. Spooge? Mm. What about, wasn't there a Mysterio one as well? Did it have a penis? No, oh, that right. was the Sin Cara penis. Oh, right? the Sin Cara penis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How the trifecta there. Yeah. The holy trinity. <laughs> 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 Number four. Wailing Mercy. Oh, life's gonna be on Wailing Mercy's hands. <laughs> Love yeah. it. Great. Good. Like the primer for uh, Bray Wyatt here. I watched a few of his matches on YouTube recently. Yeah? Yeah, just to see, like, was he... he know? Ah, not really. He was old at the time anyway, I think, wasn't he? He got injured, I think, wasn't he? That's what did him in, but... There was a, not being very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's that. But he could have been an Undertaker big guy to squash at some point. Kind of, yeah. Kind of like Sean O'Hare vibes, like of things that should have gone much farther yep. than they did. Yep. You know, he's more of a psychological gimmick. It was too, like, smart for wrestling. It's not obvious enough. He's too subtle, you know? Number three, spark plug Bob Holly. Ooh. You know, he's obvious. No. That's, he's mine. You can't. No. You won't even have him on loan. What about every second Thursday of the month? Or yeah, I, I go okay, that far. Okay. Will you leave something in the fridge? Yeah, yeah, yeah like you know, a packet of salt or something. <laughs> uh, leave some hot dogs thawing in the sink. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he says, "I'm a race fan, so I loved Holly's gimmick." That was gonna go different there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, number two, William Regal, my Ooh. boy. Well, he's just dipping his wick in the pool. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> <is. laughs> what? Ooh. Can you give us some William Regal boy eligible stuff? Because he's very talented and respected. I mean, so what keeps him in that stable? The general reason was because you two mm. were just flat out no with him and Finley. Yep. And mm. so that was the main reason why I was like, Probably. mainly yeah, spite. Yeah, spite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, like, obviously, I do love Regal and Finley. You know, I do love me some kind of old barrel chested. <laughs> Men doing holds in the <laughs> yeah, middle yeah, of yeah. a ring. Really fat thighs and really <laughs> small pants. <laughs> yeah. Always spread eagle yeah. to the camera. Yeah. That is my type of rest. <laughs> <laughs> he says one of the reasons is because he loves the song. He's a man. Such a man. He's a man. He's a man. He's able to squeeze his own um, oranges as well, you know? And it's not, I suppose, it's <laughs> pushing it into his eye. <laughs> okay. And who's his bottom boy? And his bottom boy, lads. La Parca. Because of the chair and the dance. That's like his most famous clip. He's just um, playing the chair like a guitar. That was it on like 2000 Nitro. Bam. That's sorted. It. Yeah. Straight Boy in the for life. Mm. For, 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 for life. For life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and John from Maryland Stable, Val Venus, Waylon Mercy, Sparky Pug, Bob Holly with an asterisk, William Regal with an asterisk. A bigger one. <laughs> <laughs> and bottom boy, La Parca. Fantastic stable, sir. Excellent job. Whopper tattoo. The winner is you. Oh, well, cheers, mate. Man, that's fantastic. Beautiful bit of artwork. Yeah, it's well. beautiful. It's a it's fine good. bit of industry there. It's very nice. Well done. It's professional wrestling's most dangerous night, and we're in the Tar Heel State of North Carolina. It's the most dangerous night of the year. WCW Fall Brawl, September 13th, 1998, from the Lawrence Joel Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Winston-Salem, North Kakalaki. WCW hosted Fall Brawl here for four years straight, 96-99. 240,000 pay-per-view buys, which sounds great, but it's actually the second lowest of the year before World War 3's 215. That's the one with Nash winning the 60-man World War 3 match. Fans in attendance? 11,528 sellout paying how much per ticket? Place your bets now. Put me down for 17. Ooh. 26. Wow, uh, $19. Oh, wow, okay. 1898 with a gate of 218,780. Ooh, here's the VHS cover. Yeah. I quite like that cover, actually. It's okay. My main point, the fucking cheek of them having Goldberg on the cover here. Oh, uh, not okay, even on the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He didn't even yeah. show up backstage. Yeah. Wow. 
That's implying that happened on the show. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it even happened on the night show afterwards. No. I mean, like, they did have a match, but... Sting didn't play either. No. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell because he wears the red paint <laughs> anyway, so... Anyway, two rings. Two rings? Because War Games, this year, for the first time, it features three teams of three. Commentators tonight are Tony Chavante, as Hulk Hogan would say, Iron Mike Tanay, and the legendary Bobby the Brain Heenan. Thunderous We Want Flair chants... Only fair, we're in Flair country, North Carolina. Tough shit, he's not here tonight. <laughs> the lads run down the rules of War Games, which we'll get to later tonight. I wonder why they call this show Fall Brawl. Would it not make more money if they called it War Games? Excellent point, Steve. I completely agree. Okay. There we go. Do you like the uh, camouflage tablecloth and the muzzle flash fade animations? You see the names? Pew, pew. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you like the loud cannon SFX when they like go backstage? It's like Mean Jeans getting ready. <laughs> <laughs> the quarters here of the Lawrence Jewel Coliseum in Winston-Salem. Fall ball taking place tonight. Speaking of Mean Gene with a gorgeous white tux. Very like uh, Michael Buffer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gene Mean, listen to me. <laughs> I love uh, Jericho's nod to Iron Cheek here. Uh, extremely novel for 1998. Tag team champion. You know, Jin Min, he's been calling me all day, Jin Min. TV champ Jericho has got a doozy of a scoop. It's going to be Jericho Goldberg title for title tonight. Goldberg, I'm going to take your belt and I'm going to break your streak and I'm going to be the first double champion in WCW history. Deciphering that ID code is critical. I'll be in the chamber of understanding. Our inaugural contest is Fun Boys, Disco Inferno, and Alex Wright versus the British Bulldog and Jim Neidhart. Oh, oh, fucking hell. The British Bulldog! Coming out to Bulldog's theme, Rule Britannia, it's, you know, not a WWF creation, so they can have it. It's weird, isn't it? It is very strange. It's very Mm. strange. Um, Bulldog, lads. I think this is the most rough I've Mm. ever seen him look. He's so red and swollen. Jeans? His face is bloated. It's puffy. Yeah. You're saying he looks worse here than 90. I mean, his yeah, gear actually, yeah. in, in 99 may, may have been lame. Like, <laughs> the, the big socks. The socks. I mean, yeah, the socks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you turn-ups? know he's wearing socks otherwise? <laughs> he had he's, the his socks. But. He's wearing mom jeans. <laughs> <laughs> in 99. Um, just him, like his actual physical body. He looks like a wreck here. Like, I don't know when he passed away but like 2002 yeah okay so he so he lasted a few years after this mm. he looks like he's bloated from like heart issues like now yeah kind of know? long-term steroid abuse yeah. complications coming on yeah his face he looks like dh smith his son yes you know he's like got like cushing's kind of moon face you know it's weird it's fucking scary looking it at is him. Yeah. it is oh steve what build have you got 15 seconds Nighthard jobs clean to conan to Norton and to Jericho in the build. Bulldog shows up on the Go Home Thunder and himself at Night Hard, job clean <laughs> <laughs> to Lex and Brett. Ah. That's your fucking build. Yeah, but they're heels, right? Yeah. Bully and Night Hard. Brett is a heel as well at this time. At this yeah, time. He's, with the, he's a head recruiter is, for the yeah. NBO. Brett is currently teasing face. Okay. Turn. Shouldn't they have joined up then with Brett? Yes, no. it would have made complete yeah, right. sense. This, he this said, no, we've got enough in the NWO. I, t- <laughs> I, I, I couldn't swing it. <laughs> Listen, I'm on, I'm, I'm on probation after I let uh, Stevie Ray in. <laughs> Stevie Ray in the NWO, yeah. oh, Jesus. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Immediate. Slow it down. Slow it way down. It's like, did you pull my hair? Oh, oh, oh let's not wrestle. Oh, yeah, fuck here, man. Davy Boy gives us a great monkey flip counter, lands on his feet. Ta-da! And eats a heel for hot dogging. Watching Bully wrestle, I'm just looking out for which bump on Warrior's trap door mm. gives him his spinal infection, which short- ends up shortening his life. I was the very yeah. same. And I, like, I like, there was one bump that he did take, but he took it on his hip. I, I noticed, didn't he start going towards the end of the match? He started taking more bumps on his hip. So I was thinking it must have happened early enough because he was, I think he was taking flat back bumps. Yeah, yeah. Initially. 
and then switched it. So maybe it was early on, but yeah, I couldn't figure out which one. Mm. I, I think it was a backdrop from Alex Wright that did him in. Fuck, man. Mm. Question. The management in WCW knew about the door on the ring mat, but they didn't tell the wrestlers. And so they were taking bumps in the middle of the ring, not knowing that there was a big wooden board there that is not safe to bump on. Why would they not just have all of the matches in the other ring? This is a time where there's actually two rings. <laughs> yeah. One of them that doesn't have a like an injury causing door on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. A yes. Career ending, you know, mm. prop. They could have just put a massive Toblerone over it. <laughs> <laughs> so they just <laughs> <it aside. laughs> sent Disco airborne and now Nightville. Nideville, as he's called, is even worse with his stalling and avoiding wrestling. This is Greg the Gas Tank level avoidance. Uh, on the outside, he almost drops Disco with a slam. He's like, Ugh, and just kind of hmm. pushes, and makes sure his legs hang him from the railing. Uh, Heart Foundation work over Disco, who's desperate to tag out, and the commentators rightly pick up that fun boy Alex Wright outstretches the arm, which is further away from Glenn Gilberti here. Of course, and shoot, he doesn't actually want to tag in yet. But I thought it was good kayfabe. Yeah. Mm. It's successful He brute force choke pulls Disco up Ref gets in on the run the ropes And you kind of run and jump over me uh, Knock the German off the apron Leaving Disco prone to the running power slam finisher The running stampede in WCW And uh, he was like I tried to get him up uh, I yeah. tried a second uh, And he eventually got him He hooshed him Run and slam And hits it One, two, three. It was a match that felt like a kind of mid-80s WWF tag match. Like, not really great action. The only thing that I can really re remember for it was when they went to give the whip to Bulldog and he did the little hoop and he landed on, on his feet. Not a bad match, but... Yeah, yeah it was. I thought it was actually okay as an opener. Nice to see these two lads. I mean, they're, they're still big stars and I'd rather see them than Lodi and Sick Boy, you know, and Horace Hogan. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yes, but that's what caused most of the issues with WCW was that they never wanted to take the younger guys and put them in these spots. So, you know, like you do need some kind of healthy mix. Yeah, yeah. But I don't want to see Horace Hogan. <laughs> no. No. no one wants to see Horace or, or Lodi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or sick. You know what, Steve? You're actually right. No. You know what? <laughs> the flock are actually terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bully here, he continues wrestling for one month in WCW, despite, you know, just injuring his back here. He actually beat Barbarian next night on Nitro. This trapdoor body drop causes spinal infection, which makes it painful to wrestle, which means he got addicted to painkillers and it kind of hastened his early death. He had a heart attack in May 2002 after he went out for WCW. He was in hospital for six months. Six months. And then WCW fired him via FedEx. Pretty horrible. He was out for another couple of months and then he showed up in WWF in September 99. Wow. His last bout was versus Eddie Guerrero on Sunday Night Heat, uh, May 23rd, 2000. Okay. Have fun finding that, Steve. <laughs> 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 you fucker. Almost kind of two decades later, Bulldog finally be officially recognised for his wrestling accomplishments in 2021 when his son inducted him into the Hall of Fame. That's very nice. And at the end of July 2021, WWE uh, rehired him. So D.H. Smith back in the fold. Mm. So very, very happy for him. Happy he's in a Hall of Fame. Yeah, um, and Bulldog, he is the most famous English wrestler to ever live. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Bulldog brought SummerSlam to Wembley Stadium. Yeah. Because they wouldn't have the show if he wasn't there with Brett. Yeah, so, yeah. Whoa, Steiner's not going to wrestle. Mean Jeans on the case. He pokes his nose into Papa Pump's locker room. Steiner produces his doctor's excuse from Dr. Schwartz and shows off his teeny plaster on his arm. I fucking love it. How do you feel about Steiner being portrayed as like a goofball heel? I know he was a goofball, shoot goofball, <laughs> but how do you feel about it? I'm, I'm in two minds whether he should be doing it. He's like an R-Truth territory kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah, I don't want him in the main event, so I think this is perfect. Okay. Yeah. Like, stay away from, like, legitimate matches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen enough kick punches in my lifetime. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> 
this is very entertaining and I do like watching it every week but at the same time it's meant to be a blood feud between brothers and it's not meant to be a joke and they're kind of making it so yeah 50 50 mm. JJ Dillon isn't having it tears up the note and demands the match take place or Steiner will never work for WCW again so it's on this ah! doesn't change well, do that. Oh, wait a minute I can't believe that match number two is Chris Jericho versus Bill Goldberg? Asterix? Jericho does his famous Goldberg parody entrance, and there's a bit of, hello, Cleveland's. You got it? <laughs> hello, Winston. There will be no encore. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of spinal tap getting lost while trying to find on stage. Right, right. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Here we go. Hello, Cleveland. Hello, Cleveland. I loved the backstage getting lost on the way to the ring. It was just they went one too far, which was a shame that somebody left the door open when he was heading down and you could see it was outside. That yeah. was a shame. And he couldn't switch it at that point. He'd gone too far. Yeah. But what a gimmick. This Brilliant, was yeah. fucking hilarious. My only gripe is that they only did it on the Thunder before the show where he actually does go outside <laughs> and he's got to act like the door is locked and he pulls it. <laughs> And the door is not locked. And so he opens it and he pushes it shut. And like then he blocks it with his boot and he's like, God damn, it's locked. <laughs> Fucking great. WCW lads. They still have no idea where to go. Did he leave a trail of breadcrumbs or maybe arrows on the floor to help him out tonight? If it- he can't find his way this time. It may be. On the live version, it says even flow ripoff, but the WWE Network has his lame dick, 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 and it's like four minutes of dick, dick, dick. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a fan of the JPS Jericho personal security with Ralphus? Yeah, perfect for Jericho's gimmick, you know, which he is a goofball. Big fan of Ralphus. And who's the other guy? Oh, the Jericho-holic ninja? Yeah. Is this the Kenny Powers looking for? I, I have the same thing. I have Kenny <laughs> motherfucking Powers. But very good. In fact, I stole that idea in a way for another EFED I was in. <gasps> yeah. Cheating. Yeah, no, this was 2005. So, you know, you're in computer labs in college. And mm. I went, I was like, oh, I wonder what the story is with uh, WWCW. Nothing doing there. Google EFEDs. And I found one. I can't even remember the name of it. And I did an uh, introductory promo. Got no heat whatsoever. <laughs> I was like, this actually the writing is good. So this isn't me half assing it like as a my whole seventeen ass. year old. This is actually important work. <laughs> and and then nothing doing. I brought in another character, Hubert, and then his brother Cuthbert, and they were like weirdos and I built a whole storyline around them. Hubert and Cuthbert? What did they look like? Like what did you model them on? No, I didn't model them on these lads. They were not in shape, but they were more nerdy, more kind of weedy. Have you seen the movie Audition? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And remember... Great one, film. Yeah, yeah. Horrible movie. Yeah. Like, horrible. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, disturbing. Yeah. There's somebody in a bag and he keeps moving around. You don't know oh. who it is. I think I had one of them in a bag. Oh, that's great. Yeah, Jeez, yeah, yeah. no one's done that in wrestling. Yeah. yeah. Like, it was still kind of half comedy, half unpleasant. But yeah, no heat whatsoever. So after about three weeks, I was done. <laughs> And I didn't have Jay to threaten the, <laughs> the owners of the company. <laughs> An actual Goldberg match obviously isn't going ahead, but they have Big Pyro. What is what that? Is, what has happened to Goldberg? It's Rando Baldy, who's not Gilbert. Oh, he's not Gilbert. No, no, it's uh, Mark Lee Cribb who on Profite DB has exactly one match to his name, this one. <laughs> That's so awesome. An enigma, as opposed to Johnny Attitude, who actually shaved his head for a squash mirror match with Goldberg back in May. Oh. This crib dude is much shorter and stouter. <laughs> Bald lad with a goatee. Crowd chant bullshit, then chant Goldberg. A pop from an itty bitty spear with Jericho no cells, kicks him down into the Lion Tamer for the quick tap out victory. Lion Tamer! In the Lion Tamer! Champion now? Uh, what do you think here? Yeah, very entertaining. The thing that stuck out most for me were the Goldberg t-shirts in the crowd. Did you see them? Like, you know, big, white, bright white t-shirts with a, a man that's 80% naked going on them. <laughs> I was like, oh, they're so bad. But really entertaining. 
At the time, I would have been enraged if I was watching and bought the pay-per-view or, or in the crowd. Imagine and then, if you're in a crowd. And, and the music comes on and I don't get to see that match. But yeah, very entertaining squash match. Mm, yeah, uh, I feel the same. Like like this match, it's hard to call it a match, but yeah. as a segment, yeah. loved it. Thought Jericho was great. I thought the gimmick was good. Obviously, you know, not having paid, I'm totally down with the swerve. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, no, I do pay. I pay for the fucking network. But, you know, <laughs> you're, 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 you're yeah. serious. I'm a, gotcha. I'm a big smelly man. <laughs> Yeah, agreed. Uh, something you just never see in WWF is Jericho came up with the entire angle of mocking Goldberg himself, like getting his own security and having them be crowd. That's all him, you know? I can tell, because it's great. It's great. His goal was to have a pay-per-view or a Nitro match with Goldberg where Bill just squashes him to shut him up. Perfect. And Bill didn't didn't want to have the match Yeah, he said, right? you're beneath me. I don't like your comedy stick and I don't get your appeal. Stop telling people we're going to have a fight because we're not. Because you'll either make me look like an asshole or make the company look stupid if the angle's dropped. But why, why couldn't management go, we've built this up on TV, the angle is over, Jericho's over as a heel, it's easy heat, you're going to squash him and you're going to move on? Because it's not Goldberg's choice if he was going to wrestle him or not. Do you know what I mean? But it shouldn't be. That's true. Yeah. You're an employee and you get paid. Do the thing. Yeah, do the thing. That, like right? that, that's my thinking. Yeah. Just just do what you're told me. Mm. So Jericho's below Goldberg, but I'm sure he's wrestled the likes of Horace Hogan. and <laughs> Steve, fucking, yeah. this week yeah. on Nitro, jobber squash match. This week on Thunder, jobber squash match. Who do you face? Oh, the Johnny Bald Man, <laughs> Johnny Long Hair Man. <laughs> Uh, uh, question, didn't uh, Jericho and Goldberg have a shoot fight backstage where Jericho like put him in a headlock and Goldberg couldn't get out? Very good, Stephen. Yeah, well done. Yeah, that, was mm. that makes me quite happy that big, burly man Goldberg was totally fucked because of a headlock. It's the last thing he'd expect from a wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> a wrestling move. <laughs> yeah, like, like seriously, right? It was like a front face lock. Wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like, if you're in the ring and the heel has you in a headlock, what are you going to do? You're going to pick him up and you're going to do a big back body drop. <laughs> yep. uh, so, so why didn't you do that? He's probably like, you're not letting me turn. Out, you know? <laughs> 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 uh, we eventually did get the Jericho Goldberg match in WWE five years later at Bad Blood 2003. And why two? My brother Bagwell backed me into the corner, jumped me, done whatever they thought they had to do. Cow Tongue Rick Steiner flubs his way through a promo for www.wcw.com. When it, when it comes to me, me for the ring, I, I gotta do whatever, whatever I gotta do. Thank you, sir. <laughs> what a shame, though, with Rick Steiner. Like... I'm scared of him now, and this is 23 years later. As a shoot? Like, yeah, they are. He'd fucking maul us. Jesus Christ. And he doesn't care about lawsuits or whatever. He'll just smash you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he can't articulate anything of what he wants to get across. It's such a shame. He, he could have been... if he, he couldn't keep wearing that headgear. Just I think that headgear made a mockery of him, actually. I mean, Angle even wore it. In, as, like, as a comedy. As a comedy. That as a joke. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, yeah, he's a terrifying man. Yeah. By the way, he looks nothing like Scott Steiner, but he does look like Tony the Tiger there, um, Lee Marshall beside him. Ah. Yeah. He's got the 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 and the the. <laughs> <laughs> Tony the Tiger? Yeah. Yeah, he played Tony the Tiger in the um, commercials. No. Yeah, Lee Marshall, yeah. They're good. Oh, I better get that adjusted. Is he the guy that was tapping on the laptop? <gasps> no, <I> was, <laughs> oh, yeah, that was so amazing. The, the, the phony tech guy who's, what was he doing he, he was like oh yeah I'm transcribing this for WCW.com oh, that but it? You, you see him because he's like loop, 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 <laughs> his fingers straight out of like RTE Prime News yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for cutting benefits it's believed this will force tough decisions I think it's inevitable that you- will force tough decisions will force tough decisions Alright, let's go to the interview right now. WCW International Television. Mike Tanay is outside with the Armstrong brothers, the lads who aren't Road Dog, Brian Armstrong. You've got the two others. It's like <gasps> the one who went on to be a SmackDown referee. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Did you hear what the two of them said? It was easy. So so they were there and they were gonna get their promo time and 
Ernest walks up and they go, hey, dude, we don't get much TV time. Come on, let us have our camera time, please, mate. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, you you just buried yourselves, boys. Yeah, pity, bro. Oh. <laughs> Look, brother, we never get an interview, so do you mind just showing a little class? And- Ernest Miller does us a solid by breaking it up before it starts, and officials break up Norman Smiley before there's any black on black crime. <laughs> because that's next! <laughs> So we've got the cat and Norman Smiley. Is this the second time in OSW history we're covering this feud? Didn't they feud during the yeah, April. Arquette? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very oh good. my god! Like, and <laughs> they did it again. It was <laughs> what were? Oh my! They, they thought it was that good. They do it two years later. <laughs> I'm the Ernest Miller with serious trucker music. He's like, before he gets somebody call my mama. Somebody call my mama. In WWE, which was stolen by? Mick Foley. <laughs> which was stolen by <laughs> <laughs> <What? laughs> And also stolen by... Rodus Clay. We, oh, then it was stolen by Mick Foley yeah, yeah. because he thought it would be funny mm. because he had no jokes on a stand-up <laughs> show. He'd come out to that dressed as Brodus Clay. <sighs> and we looked at but each other. But the Focusaurus other. wasn't even over. Uh, he was. It was like the first week of his run <laughs> as the dinosaur thing. Yeah. But then the Funkadactyls were over because they were hot. Yeah. I can take a man apart in five seconds. What do you guys think of Ernest Miller's gimmick? That I'm a three-time karate world champion and if I wanted to, I could kill you. Like, I do like the gimmick where he's, I'm going to beat you in two minutes and he would beat people in two minutes because I think that's quite OC booking. Mm. But as with the OC booking, it can't last very long. (laughs) (laughs) Because the company closes. (laughs) (laughs) They don't want to book you that way. You you can't beat Goldberg in two minutes, maybe. Uh, Yeah, no no future in this gimmick. As serious, as a comedy thing, I think it could go far. Like, legitimate credentials in fake sports don't cross over. Very rarely. It, Only in, like... It's a hindrance. Amateur wrestling, really, is the only one that really crosses over. MMA, maybe. Y- like, you'll you'll be known for it, and you have to integrate it into your style. Yes. And for Ernest Miller, that's just doing the war And the war And now I don't believe that you have these yeah. credentials, you know? You lost your credibility yeah. when you did that. Mm. So is he legitimate? He is. Okay, yeah, but, but I, yeah, I didn't believe it, yeah. Do you know where we got his job? that he's legit Eric Bischoff's son's karate instructor. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and baby. His son goes off to the arcade or he's supposed hold to on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. Lads, lads, when you say his son, do you mean future TNA superstar Gareth Bischoff? Jing, jing, jing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Gareth Bischoff, yeah. And he's yeah. You know, with the Bischoff tattoo on his chest. I don't remember the tattoo. Do you remember that he had his own lockdown team. He was the captain. You know who who's under him? Mr. Kennedy, AJ Styles, or VD. Ah! Uh, I was like, thank you, Mr. Bishop. <laughs> TNA, TNA, TNA. We, need, we need to go. We need to go there. <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh, oh! Never drew a dime. Wow. Ooh, Smiley, Norman Smiley, he is shockingly agile, given his kind of historically comical gimmicks. Wonderful spinning back suplex, solid leg drop, and reverses back onto his feet. No small wonder when WCW closed, he was able to get work in TNA, and after he retired, became a trainer in WWE's FCW and NXT. Yeah, a solid hand. (laughs) He's in the performance centre now. Cat with a feliner, top rope, switching foot, and jumping back kick, fucking slips, and doesn't connect. Follows up with a ghetto blaster and gets the three. And there it is again. A mat and he gets that three count. Wow. Wasn't bad. Norman Smiley, as you say, very agile. I'd like to see him in a serious match. He's in great shape. The cat. If you're going like, to have the karate gimmick, you need to show me more than that same kick over and over again. It was fine, but these two lads don't need to feud ever. <laughs> not in 98, not in 2000, not ever. What about like 2009 TNA or something? <laughs> <laughs> Jim Neidhart comes out with his big pot belly. Like. <laughs> I, I do see it with Norman Smiley. Like, I, could you could have like an MMA gimmick, an amateur wrestler gimmick. I can see it. Yeah, that kind of catches, catch can kind of job. Yeah. Because yeah. he even, even has the little booties on. Mm. Yeah. I feel like he's holding back a lot when you're watching him, you know? 
I think I'm a bigger fan of Ernest Miller than both of you guys. I like the gimmick. Um, it's going to sleep on your couch now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I just see it as like a solid kind of low mid card gimmick. You know, you could have him win the TV title and that would be fine. Uh, before we move on, though, uh, the music, let's. Mm. Norman Smiley, he's got a complete ripoff of a Megadeth song called Victory. So the like song goes like and there's is like it's like fucking brilliant. Ernest Miller's sounds like a, a complete ripoff of you know the song Black Velvet and wanna sing so the intro to that song is like a real slow like kind of chugging jun 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 and this is it's easily there. just like jun 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 <laughs> <laughs> Match number four, Steiner versus Steiner, Rick versus Scott. Steve, the build. Okay, so this goes back to before Roadwild. Scott Steiner, he was posing with his brother after a win, and then he like double fists him on the back of the neck. He pearl harbors him. Rick is out injured. He wants to batter his brother, and Scott doesn't want to fight. So he comes up with all these wacky, crazy ways to not fight his brother. Roadwild, he comes out on a gurney wearing a oxygen mask over the next few weeks he brings out his like doctor as a doctor Cecil Schwartz very good testing his arm out and it drops so he's like ah you know my arm has no power I can't wrestle and so he calls out Dr. Juju that's Buff who (laughs) comes out dressed as a Jamaican shaman top stuff and he's doing all the like shaky wakey stuff and he's got his little bag of like powder and he he's like throwing it at him and moving around and then he put a Roxy Laveau in there yeah oh yeah Yeah. totally Roxy Uh, and so then he lifts up his arm he puts some powder on it and now his arm is magically fixed and then the final week in the go home show we actually do get something serious a sit down promo with Rick they were the greatest tag team in the world but his brother turned on them made him sad broke up a great tag team and it made their parents sad he's gonna batter him for him for his parents and for the fans Hmm. it was a fun build and then the end was quite good so we come to brother versus brother for the first time of only three tonight (laughs) (laughs) I can't believe there's only three times, my goodness. It's Scott Steiner with Buff Bagwell. Welcome to the Dog Pound. (laughs) We got for the games. (laughs) (laughs) Jimmy Hart, you've done it again. Scott versus Rick Steiner, the strongest versus the toughest, the smartest versus the dumbest. Exactly how a literal blood feud should go, they fast-paced batter each other to start off. Crowd popped huge or well up for it. We're in fast forward. Scott bails to the outside and gets clobbered. Buff holds Rick's leg so Scotty can cheap shot him. Low blow with the ref distracted. Counter suplex with a DDT. Bagwell by the scruff of the neck into the ring post. His apparent injury causes a temporary match stoppage which becomes a permanent match stoppage. Yeah. Scott on the chin! Scott on! Okay, I'm not trying to walk too many times, you just don't know! It's such a shame because the first 90 seconds of this match were fucking electric. And I was like, oh, oh, oh my god, this is awesome. Like, I wasn't expecting much and you guys are over delivering this is amazing i'm loving this oh my god and ah oh, fuck mm. it annoyed me they didn't stop the match until 7 minutes in so technically you got 7 minutes of wrestling here <laughs> oh the cheek from bagwell ring post bump 
to revealing it was a sham. Over nine minutes. This killed the crowd. Hilariously, Scott and Rick have been feuding since February and they haven't done a one-on-one match yet. It's September and this is what we got. In shoot, they just didn't want to wrestle each other. But they'd have to go again. So see you at Halloween Havoc. I was well on board with this initially. Oh, they're playing this really well. I obviously knew it was a work, but I think Rick overdid it by saying you better be fake. And he should have kept his mouth shut. If you're doing it for the audience at home, make it look real. And it stopped looking real when Rick starts acknowledging that this could be a work. They went on like seven minutes too long, you know, which is... Yeah, the first couple were fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Holy... Uh, and Bischoff was like, oh, it was fine. It was for the people on TV. Oh, not for the crown. You know, well, at least we know where Vince got his uh, million dollar mania thing from. Ah, come on, I my legs. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been at least three episodes <laughs> since we broke that out. <laughs> I can't believe you found a way. I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, this is it. You fine. Paul. Paul. Match number five, a cruiserweight title match. It's Silver King versus the champion, Juventud Guerrera. Steve, we got, oh, we got prime he hooing here <laughs> with Dave Penzer. Can you give us a uh, Silver King versus Juventud Guerrera? Silver King. Juventud <laughs> <laughs> It's a bit Swedish chef, isn't it? Yeah. Who knew who Super King! Hoovitude! Hoovira! Hoovy's coming off his feud with Jericho. Back at Super Brawl in February, he lost a mask versus title match. Not mask versus face. (laughs) (laughs) Hoovy had to unmask Jericho slagging and calling him (laughs) Quasi-Juice. After Quasimodo, Hunchback of Notre Dame. But Hoovy won it back at Road Wild and has now moved on to fellow Lucha Silver King, who does nothing special in WCW, made five pay-per-view appearances in his three-year stint here. Bigger impact as Black Tiger in New Japan in the early 2000s. Most famously, peeps might know him as the heel Ramses in Jack Black's Nacho Libre. I fight. I watched the first five minutes of that movie and I just like, way too quirky for me. Can I shock you, Steve? Please do. Hated that film. I am absolutely shocked. Yeah, because I love Jack Black. And I you love wrestling. I love wrestling, yeah. yeah. This is catnip, should yeah. be. Yeah. I, I, I watched that movie. That is a shit movie. Are we all in agreement? Yeah, Quirky weird. nonsense. Like, I love Napoleon Dynamite, but Napoleon Dynamite wrestling with Jack Black just did not work. This is like King Kong Jack Black turning up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's actually, he might get you over if you watch the behind the scenes of King Kong. Um, he says he hugged the monitor because when they, they tape a scene and they will go back and have a look at how the scene played out because he'd ham it up. So he's like, oh, great actor, great actor, great actor. And watch him. And he's like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like the genie from X. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he just say how shit of an actor he is. So anyway, you might like him then. Okay, you know? might okay. put you over. I don't dislike him. Yeah. I just don't want to see him in anything. <laughs> Lewis. Everyone's good. Everyone's real. Look at everyone's face. Everyone's on the same page, right? What's that guy doing? What movie is he in? <laughs> no, what's the grimace? <laughs> okay. I'm show her your so sometimes you need to watch playback. Accomplished, and that is Scott Steiner avoiding his brother Rick Steiner. What bar is Silver King? Oh, never mind. He's not wearing silver. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, lots of fast paced deftly executed no selling spots springboard head scissors by Hoovy tilt a world backbreaker plancho from the top rope to the outside Hoovy loses his grip for an aloha urn and Silver King waddles back the punch that was hilarious <laughs> <laughs> Uh, flippy, flippy, flip, flippy, whippy, whippy. As uh, Silver King <laughs> misses a quarter splash and ends up on breath rope, leaving him prone for a poison Frankensteiner. Shockingly, that doesn't seal the victory. So never surrender, Hooven dude. <laughs> Hits a Hoovy driver and 450 splash, getting the biggest pop of the match. One, two, three, and retains the cruiserweight title in eight and a half minutes. Here it comes! enjoyable cruiserweight match there's been better perfectly fine the 450 splash is a thing of beauty it was very nice terrifying like you can tell um silver king here is terrified to take it i'd be terrified to take it but uh how would you sell it though 
and uh, kicking my legs or you know, <laughs> tapping my feet on the canvas. <laughs> uh, but yeah, perfectly good. This match was very good. Not much selling or psychology, but it's a cruiserweight match between Hoovy and Silver King. So for what it was going to be, I thought it was good. Technically the best match on the show so far. Yeah, agreed. Uh, oh, by all reports, Hoovy was a bit horrible to work with. Uh, like he wouldn't protect you in moves because, well, mm. Hoovy's Hoovy. And started using The Rock's mannerisms and moves as he legit... Consi- the pebble! <laughs> yeah, he's, he, he's, instead of The Rock, he's The Juice because he's like the Mexico's The Rock. He believes this. He's said to be unbearable backstage in WWE in the mid-2000s, uh, having the arrogance as if he was like a cornerstone of the company. <laughs> Big timing John Cena and Batista backstage, <laughs> that kind of stuff. I remembered hearing about this and thinking it was the funniest thing ever. And it was only exacerbated by Vince because he was like, ah, oh, maybe someday I'll make Hooventu world champion. And he was like, oh. <gasps> <laughs> so when he got the boot, he was like, all oh, right, you're jealous of my talent. And uh, that's why I didn't get over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like Vince, I assume, was saying it as in, I am so good a promoter, I could even make Juventus yeah, the, cha- yeah. the world champion. Yeah. Oh, man, that's embarrassing. And he just took it to heart and was like, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, delusional. <laughs> to be, as long as I'm not having to work with him, sounds awesome, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, lo- I love that. I-, I want to be a fly on the wall for that. Yeah. You think you impressed The Rock? Why? Because a couple of months ago, you were down south beating some jabroni named Hooventud? www.wcw.com hotline at the internet location backstage. (laughs) NWO Scott Hall confronts Wolfpack's Conan, slurring his words and throws his drink in his face. Eh? Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Riveting section. <laughs> Match number six is Raven versus Saturn under Raven's rules. And the build up? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Nothing. I actually felt the opposite <gasps> way around. I actually thought that this was the best built feud on this show. Enthralled me, Stephen. What do yeah. you got? Perry Saturn was part of the flock, but then he was fighting with Raven, and so he left. But he felt bad for the rest of the members of the flock, so he wanted to make it his mission to free every other member of the flock. So it began on Thunder, where he was wrestling Lodi. If Perry won, Lodi was free. But if Lodi won, then Perry had to be his bitch for the next month. Flock interfere, uh, Canyon gets involved, Saturn loses. They want him to break Riggs' fingers, and he said no. They have a go at him for having pride. You have too much pride, Saturn. So they broke his fingers, and then the following week, he did the same to Canyon. So that brings us to this show, Saturn versus Raven. If Saturn wins... The rest of the flock are free. If Raven wins, Saturn's gone. What do you think of that, though? Yeah, I thought this was a great promo package. I'm not saying I would have wanted to watch it week to week, but as a condensed kind of five-minute shtick, I thought it was great. I loved the brutality of the broken finger spots. So, yeah, I'm on board. Because mm, I was looking at them like you're all a bunch of job guys. But they are. opening card losers. The flock suck. And I know I've brought this up more than once. The Raven character and the Raven flock, they are remembered way too fondly. It's not good, but I I did like this angle. Okay. Although, I do want to point out Saturn's a really bad promo. Oh, Holy oh, fuck! Wow. This is all about honor, and you have none! Uh, uh, did no? he write that one? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's a black hole of charisma. Gorgeous five-star frog splash, though. So far, the match is nothing. I'm just watching Lodi and his multiple signs. Raven beats Saturn. Saturn is bald. Why, Bill, why? Bill, did you inhale? I don't get it. When I was in England, I experimented with marijuana a time or two, and I didn't like it. And didn't inhale, and never tried it again. Um... Uh... Uh, his gimmick is mostly how he's dressed here with the hair and the, the pants, the, the, Terrible. the glasses. Being the flock's punching bag and acting as a walking billboard. Some his, some the crowd's. I thought it was a solid gimmick. 
Really? Like, obviously you're job guy nothing, but like, that's a fun thing that you can kind of get in with the crowd with. I'll give you a couple of signs so you can tell me if you like them or not. Oh, this is real signs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah go on, yeah. Here's my favourite, to- yeah. favourite is very generous. Yeah. Here's t- seven signs that uh, Lodi brought to the ring. Are you re- releasing this as a standalone video, Jay? Yeah, I feel- <laughs> <laughs> top video. seven Lodi signs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Number seven. Bang this. Uh, obviously mocking DDP, no? I, don't, I mean, yeah, like yes, but it's also mocking himself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll bang go bang, me, bang like, me. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's a bang cushion, yeah. like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Um, so okay, there better be six better than that. Okay, number six. I love the snarky. Bo- <laughs> <laughs> Why are we here? Oh, I think he should have brought that out in like ninety nine, two thousand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> number five. If it's raining, bring your La Parca. And now that okay, works. that's good. That's, that's good. the best one so far. Okay. okay. I was on the no. same nitro. Number four. Nice haircut, Nick. Is it Nick Patrick? Yeah. Uh, Nick Patrick turned babyface, so he cut his hair, shaved his facial hair. Bit of a subtle swipe at a ref getting more focused than the cruiserweights. Oh, okay. Then yeah, if there's layers, I'm on board. Okay, where are we now? Number three. Number three. One flew over the raven's nest. Oh, I like it. I get it, but I don't... Okay. okay. I thought it was a fun pun because obviously uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. The plot fits Raven's flock as Jack Nicholson's character McMurphy thinks he can get out of prison work by pretending to be mad, but the scheme backfires when he's sent to a mental asylum. So it's very much yeah, like the plot. Yeah. Anyway, okay. And they can't escape. Number two. Raven beats Seinfeld. Both Thunder and Seinfeld were on the same channel, TBS, and Seinfeld had only finished like under three weeks before Thunder debuted. Yeah. Yep. And you move <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Simple and effective. And effective. <laughs> I like it. Oh uh, yeah, that was a sold out idea. Don't worry, Steve. I've got the dates and the and the shows. <laughs> So it won't be too bad for you. I, I would have had to have gone through the history of my trip. <laughs> Shit, I'm deleting them. <laughs> uh, yeah, any more memorable Lodi signs? Leave them in the comment section. Yeah. With dates of the shows. Yeah. <laughs> now presses the arms down, but still cannot keep him down. Back in Fall Brawl, oxymoronically, they are actively disinterested. They don't even pop for a sexy pin. Straddle for your pleasure. Do you like this? The inappropriate, intimate, grab yeah, the yeah, finger yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. How does Saturn try to escape this sexy pin? Thrusting. Thrust penis to penis. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. They interlock fingers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is this like the Terminator 1 yes, sex it is. scene? It's, like- it's the same thing. Drop toe hold onto a chair in Saturn's hand. He takes a bump, signaling for your favourite, <laughs> signaling for the vlog. And the commentators, don't, they don't even try, really. <laughs> he didn't get all of it. Yeah. Oh. The flockers bring out a table, Kidman swerves and drop kicks Raven, scurrying them all to the back. Hey! Kidman drop kicks Raven to the top! Saturn hits a DVD, but it only garners a two. That should have been the finish. But I'm proved dead wrong as we get our first ever Saturn chant. I never thought I'd see the day. With the signs. <laughs> Saturn, Saturn, Saturn. <laughs> Yo, Smackdown versus Raw. Flurry of a finish. T-bone suplex. Belly to belly. Overhead release. Brett's rope springboard guillotine leg drop. Michinoku-ish driver. Rings of Saturn. Lodi bumps, ref Mickey J bumps, Canyon retrieves the key, self rock bottom, Saturn DVDs Lodi through the table to the outside, holy shit! But Saturn eats a Raven Flow DDT, oh no! But kicks out! Saturn goes Super Saiyan, hits a quickie DVD and pin, one, two, three! Saturn! He's gonna pick it up! I enjoyed this one. Saturn is a very good wrestler. Yep, and no Raven has a lot of charisma. Mm-hmm. The flock are obviously terrible, but I still loved Billy. It's it's so rare you see a face turn, isn't it? Like a shock face turn. So that I was I enjoyed that face turn. I don't enjoy seeing Horace Hogan, Lodi 
and Sick Boy. But I did get a laugh out of Sick Boy from I was it which I think it was you, Steve, that said uh, that he dressed like Raven's Bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love. I, I, I laughed yeah, I watching it. Like, yeah, yeah. I love that. You know what the problem is? Raven's voice is not intimidating enough. No. You've been an embarrassment for far too long. And tonight begins the beginning of your permanent indentured servitude. Quote the Raven, nevermore. He should be gravelly. Think more nails. That's that's where you want to be erring on the side of nails if you want to be on the mic representing a group of misfits that are quite dark in their themes. Without the funny, you know, the, the, <laughs> without the warble. Yeah, without the warble. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I thought I really enjoyed the promo package. I really enjoyed this. I hope it's a payoff. Um, so yeah, well done. Mm. The first half of this match was like some of the most boring wrestling I've ever seen. The post flockers coming out is the complete opposite. And I thought that the end of this match was fucking awesome. The fans came to life. Saturn was crazy over. Billy Kidman's turn. And that false finish at the end where people thought that Raven was going to win, kick out DVD and pin, and the fans just went mental. It was fantastic. The build for this match was the best on the show. I really loved it, and it was my favourite thing on the show. Yeah. Um, I hated the build. I, I really like Raven, but it's just Saturn and the flock. Holy, and I haven't even seen much yet, and I already hate your guts. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, shocking, awesome finish here. Made Saturn look way bigger than he was. Big baby face win, happy ending. So overall, huge win. Great job, lads. <laughs> Lovely news from Jim Duggan that they were able to remove his kidney tumour. And the commentators wish him well. Uh, he actually recovers and is back wrestling at next year's Fall Brawl. Your boy, fun boy, Alex Roy. Alex Roy, yeah. Yeah, Berlin, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's I like, is Steve Austin not available? <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought it was really sweet that the three lads all go, right lads, on three, let's give them a ho! That's really cool. Super nice, yeah. Yeah. Let's give him one. Thumbs up to you, Jim. Ho! ho! And that's the halfway point of the show. Let's take it to the... I've actually got one for you this time. Oh, it's, fuck. Yeah. Our bra, Colonel Harper, accommodates for WWA out of Kentucky and Indiana. What OSW reference does Colonel Harper drop during the Shane Douglas-Jordan Whittaker match? <sighs> Shane Douglas. Answer after the break. Hey, honey, buddy, where's the fellas? Burgers are done. They should be here any minute, darling. Who wants some? Bring it on! Backyard Wrestling 2. There goes the neighborhood. In stores now. Rated M for mature. Hamburgers are hot dogs. I have a cheeseburger. Before the break, I asked, which OSW reference does Colonel Harper drop during the Shane Douglas bout in WWA? I was just going to say, none, because it's a Matthew quote. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good answer. It's not going to be an amazing joke. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> If you answered any of these, you're right. I mean, you've seen better days, Shane. However, Shane Douglas, an expert at having a moan. Oh, and the punches from Brett's rope, the most dangerous rope. Shane Douglas throwing down Jordan Whitaker like he was the NWA championship. What a pittance. And a shot stiffer than a V1 Irish coffee. Yeah, very yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, so, can I coke to you and all the lads at World Wrestling Alliance? WWA is now on YouTube. Cheers, Colonel Harper. Yeah, fucking animal. Yeah. Ah, oh, we should catch up with the Colonel. <laughs> 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 See you next time, and thanks for playing. Right down the middle, and the old guy can still do it clean. Can of coke to you, Shane Douglas. Hey, Minnesota. <laughs> And we're back with match number seven. It's Kurt Hennig versus Iceman Dean Malenko. 
Malenko would really like to reform the Horsemen, and Hennig turned on the Horsemen at Fall Brawl last year. This is a rematch from OSW 101 Nitro, and the Go Home Nitro, which was a cage match. Hennig beats Malenko up for a while, decides I'm done having the advantage, jumps up and clings to the inside top of the cage, (laughs) Uh, like he's ready for a Spider-Man attack, but he just stays there and Dino pulls him down and perfect takes a back pump. Obviously, with that, we think about Rick Rude. Now, what this is about, I don't know. Normally, cage matches will not have a device like this. Most of it is a kick-punch rest hold, but I loved Perfect's Mean Mark Callis throwback as he exposed the breast and heart punch. Mm. Mm. Count Von Count. Yeah, that was, that was my finish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Steak. Yeah, yeah. They were yeah. the worst tag team ever, weren't they? But though? then the other one had to move. Cape Fear. Yeah. Yeah. I love I loved them. <laughs> oh, Sizzle in the Sizzle steak. In the Separate steak. characters. That's too good to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't waste okay. it. Okay, <laughs> take it back. And we've got a new tag team. <laughs> Sizzle in the steak. <laughs> Yeah, uh, ref bump, NWO lads storm in, horseman Arn Anderson cleans house, massive pop, crowd love it. And on Thunder, Arn says, Milenko would have made an excellent horseman. And he's like, what a lovely thing to say. And you can see that just means the world to him. Yeah. I would be honoured to call you a horseman. Side note, NWO colour scheme, yes, it's black and white, but most wrestlers take that to mean all black, splash and white. I love that Rick Rude and Stevie Ray take the white bit to heart, because Stevie Ray's in blistering white with a little bit of black. <laughs> and Rick Rude has like a massive poofy white shirt. And, it's like, mm. and you know that Brett had it in his contract. I am not wearing, I have to wear the pink and black. Which is a shame. I would have liked him to have a version of it. NWO, pink and black. (laughs) (laughs) Why didn't they do that? (laughs) (laughs) They should have done that. times has he done it? He's had him hooked in that Texas clover leaf when members of the NWO black and white have interfered. Ding, ding, ding. Straight four schmals to the outside, you lazy knackers. <laughs> <laughs> Massive we want flair chance. Yeah, you know what that means. We don't want this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're such a great indirect insult to yeah. what you're being served. Hennig's knee is thrown into the ring post and then sells it by his knee buckling when going for a scoop slam. Sporting things. Undoes this immediately by doing a head scissors stomp, impacting his knee, and bolts back in pain. So he's like, uh, 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 uh. twist the knee, kick the knee, drop kick the knee, <laughs> cannonball whoopsie the knee, leg grapevine pressuring the knee. Proof successful as Hennig buckles when he tries to hit a perfect plex. Milenko hits one instead, so Root comes in for the DQ loss. No, oh, it's a fucking... Every match involving the NWO is a DQ. They must never lose, but they must also never go over clean. Yeah. The cosmic ballet goes on. <laughs> Spot here, what go? Oh, Savior Arn Anderson comes in to save Dino from the beatdown, and the crowd is very loud, but you know what's louder than the crowd? Ding 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 We're back in mass again, are we? Uh what'd you think, man? I have no Ding 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 I I have nothing to say about this match, which is such a shame because you've got perfect and Malenko. And it's it's only ninety eight. We're not talking two thousand and two here. There's no excuses for these two lads here to put on at least something resembling a good match, but nothing to be said. And it wasn't even heated considering the build. Perfect turned on Dino last year and then battered him cage match interference and then they had more shit on the Go Home Thunder. And so you're like, this is heated. This is like two men who want to kick lumps out of each other. And it's like, I'm just, I'm just going to work your knee. And at one point in the match, Hennig will do Hennig Plex and he'll go, oh God, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll sell his knee. And then we'll fuck over the fans with a DQ. Yeah. This is the third time that I've watched these two wrestle and I've been disappointed every time. Move on, please, let's. Yeah. Agreed. 
But good, Stephen, because you won't get it. This is the end here. This is the blow off. Yeah. Oh, My only friend, the end. No rematch. Perfect's last match for four months due to his actual knee injury, which they're playing up on TV. And they're both off doing other things when he returns. But yes, we would have one last singles. Hennig would beat Malenko November 10th, 1999 on Thunder. Needless to say, he had the last laugh. <laughs> Uh, N- needless to say yeah. mm. this match it looks good in the rule book but not in reality because calamity booking interference from Shane Douglas Asia Disco Inferno and poofy white shirt Benoit he gets the three immediately cut to Saturn and some jail bait girl on his lap oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Match number eight, it's Scott Hall versus Conan. Scott is late as Vincent waits for him. I thought it was a nice touch. And Hall comes out with a drink in hand. Great sell of uh, Scott's drunken gimmick. Scott Kayfabe almost falls from posing on Brett's rope and he's told he's hot-dogging in the wrong ring. I was like, the only way we know that this is a work is because the commentators bring attention to it. Yeah. As, as opposed to sandbagging it, you know? Absolutely, because if this was true... The last thing you're going to do is put it over. You're going to send over Sergeant Slaughter with the towel to like <laughs> wrap it around him because you don't want to see it on live TV. <laughs> Before you go any further, Steve, do you know who Conan beat in the build-up to this match? Big Black Bullycock. Party Marty Gennetti. Wow. He's back. He's, he wrestled twice in the build-up to the show, yeah. once on Nitro, once on Thunder. Looks great, by the way, although big gurney smile on his face when he's <laughs> doing everything. He can't help it. Was he getting beaten down? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like I want to say Conan is like whipping him to the corner and hitting him with the clothes, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking brilliant. Jeez, new generation to Heroes of Wrestling, yeah. the WCW 98. We can't escape, yeah, Marty. Yeah, and why would we? Yeah. <laughs> Wrestling is not killing Scott Hall. Scott Hall is killing Scott Hall. Scott Hall's demons are killing Scott Hall. Last call, Scott Hall. Throughout 98 and 99, Razor was arrested numerous times for drunk and disorderly behaviour, bad enough that his wife Dana publicly appealed for help. Kind of peak troughed with EZ trying to talk him out and kind of Hall, kayfabe kind of vomited on him. The big payoff was having Hall off TV for a year without explanation. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a bit nasty. It was a bit gross playing off Hall's real life issues and not helping, probably making it worse. Left a bad taste in my mouth. But at the same time, like I'm also a wrestling fan. I'm a wrestling mark. It's compelling TV as well, you know, and uh, we all eat it up. So we're part of the problem. So Mm, yeah, great. Well put, Steve. Bischoff kind of recounted this is really embarrassed and he hates that they made an angle out of it. Like, he's quite ashamed of it. So. Uh, he should be, because he's the one who did it. Bischoff would say that, listen, converting real-life problems and onto TV is always really good in wrestling, but this is one of the times where it, just, it was a bad idea. Yeah. Who, who else? They did, they did a Jerry Lawler and Jake the Snake. You know, he oh, was yeah, yeah, pretending 96. to... Yeah, yeah, in 96. Punk went after Jeff Hardy back like 10 years ago. Oh, about, he about, did in his promo yeah, before yeah, yeah. he won the belt, right? Yeah. Or oh, before was, Jeff won the belt. And he's opened up a bottle of booze and poured it on him, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like... TNA did it with Rhino. Yes, and James Storm. So they've done it time and time again. Do you know who I think sold this brilliantly over the weeks? Virgil. <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he sold your breadsticks, was it? <laughs> um, Kevin Nash, I fully believed that he was, A, furious with his best friend, but B, also sad... And that's the reason why he never got into the ring because he didn't want to beat up his best friend who was at his absolute lowest. I love how they sell it on Nitro because he was in the ring versus Lex. And so he goes out to get a drink. And when he eventually makes it back into the ring, Lex just gets him collar and elbow tie up, force him into the corner. And he just says, what are you doing? You need help. You're going to injure someone. You're going to get fired. You know, and it's like, oh wow, that you know, and it's not said into the mic. The camera picks it up because he's just talking to Scott. We we eavesdrop on it. It was brilliant. It was really good. So, do you not think it was just a little bit over the top him bringing the drink out to the ring? Like, talk about hitting you in the face with a frying pan. You know, I do. Quang. I do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll hire him too. <laughs> I do appreciate the storyline they're building here, but 
and him hiding the drink and I just thought it was a little bit over the top but it, it is a bit whatever that drink is it looks delicious though I must say <laughs> doesn't it yeah, yeah, yeah proper yeah, cocktail yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Tanae says Conan is Nash's good mate, so this is as close as we're going to get to a Nash Hall match, which we would at the next pay per view, <laughs> Halloween Havoc <laughs> 98. Love the doink mirror spot for the test of strength. And then Conan just has none of it and clocks him. Follows up with a rolling lariat. He like whips into the ropes, then he rolls into a lariat. Oh, it's very look, nice. Looked amazing. Here you go. Conan! Oh! He never saw him coming. Conan gets a great pop and it's incredible. Like he's legitimately like Mexico is Hulk Hogan. I think, One of the top draws of all time. Oh like. God, yeah. Like I think that they did a fairly good job in the build up to this. Like having watched like the last kind of eight weeks of Nitros and Sorry, things Steve. like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Thunders. Um, oh my God. <laughs> I think Conan is maybe like the third most overact in this company after Goldberg and Nash. And it's like, he's really over, and he's really good, and he's a good promo, and he's got a good look. If he was a few inches taller, you could absolutely push him as your top He'd guy. He'd be a baller. He would. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. I wish I had a girl who looked good. I would call her. Comedy drunk spots by Hall, and doing an abdominal stretch close to the rope so Virgil can hand him his drink. Well, he's doing, I thought, oh, what a great spot. I was like watching it. I was like, it's adding flavor because Scott at this time wasn't a great wrestler and he is not motivated to wrestle. So adding these spots make his matches interesting, you know? I mean, he's getting maximum out of doing the minimum. So, mm. you know, from that point of view, it works. He's Kevin Nashing it. He is. <laughs> he is. His offense is loads of rest holds. Any big move is followed by a stop and take a breather. Hall doesn't go for a pin, but asks for a drink. Conan takes advantage with a face buster and slaps on his finisher quite fitting a tequila sunrise for the quick tap I hate to say it but I smell a tequila sunrise and you see one now he taps out there's the drink there's the drink a delicious drink by the way what's in it tequila orange juice and grenadine mm. nice uh, any thoughts on this it was entertaining they were going for a comedy element to it as well. And Hall was very funny. And at one point, didn't he fall between the two rings at yeah. one point? Yeah, I thought that was hilarious. Uh, he got in way too much offense. Conan should have battered him. If you're going... If, I agree. It'd be different if it was Hall versus, I don't know, Gilberg. Then, I, you know, a drunk Hall versus a sober Gilberg, you'd expect, a, you know, a decent match. Conan, top of his game, potentially should have battered the shite out of Hall. It made no sense for him to get in offense. But I enjoyed it as a guilty pleasure. Could they do the gimmick where Hall, like he's South going to the ring and then they make him eat raw coffee? <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> amazing. Like Back to Future 3. Kind yeah. Of. yeah. <laughs> oh, I'd love that. Fuck it. <laughs> Eight matches down. One match left. Because it's time for your main event. <laughs> your murder event. <laughs> Warrior Games. What has Warrior been up to since his debut on Nitro? Three weeks out, Warrior cuts an in-ring promo. His lawsuit sorted, he gets the WWF portion of his team, runs to the ring and shakes the ropes. When he comes out and does his promo, he says a line and then waits 10 seconds each line like he's slower than scott hall doing his promo uh, uh, horrendous i agree with you completely so me and you last time out really liked warrior's promo this boring rambly promo was fucking shit i think i'm done with you now mate like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like it took a, you about a week a total <laughs> a total 360 mate <laughs> fucking hell Rawr. I did like the line, Hogan, you traded being one in a million to being one of the millions. 
Yeah, pretty good. And the promo was like 10 minutes long. I think he's copped the people are getting restless and sick of his shit. They were enthusiasm waning. As he says, patience, warriors. Patience is a great virtue. <laughs> oh, you, you're, basically, uh, uh, uh. you're basically telling everyone to shut up and listen. Yeah. He announces he's launching the OWN revolution, despite it already being out. And <laughs> there's a load of white t-shirts in the crowd, is it? Um, in fact, I, I launched it earlier this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys find it funny that on the week that he's doing the One Warrior Nation is the week where he joins Team WCW? Oh my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Bollocks. Yeah. Those three men together! Can you beat tradition? I think not! Whoa, Piper? When did he join? Nitro after Warrior debuted, DDP issued an open invitation for anyone to step up to the plate, and Peeper provides. He wants him to step up to the plate. It's batter up time for Rowdy Roddy Piper here in Chicago. Two weeks out, Warrior interrupts an opening Hogan Bischoff promo. The lights go out, dry ice plume, and that's it. He skulks around the rest of the night in the rafters with the bat signal blasting him out of it. <laughs> don't you want that to touch him in <laughs> face mate a point of <laughs> uh, he appears whenever NWO wrestlers wrestle thought that was quite clever and comes out at the end to haunt Hogan and spooky time smoke happens oh that is not all that happens Jay. oh go on during this segment the team first of all kind of spray his like fumes too early and then they're like, oh, shit, 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 shit. Oh, yeah, that's they blew their wad. <laughs> they blew their wad, right? Then, secondly, when they actually get their cue and they do it, the NWO members don't wait long enough and the ring isn't fully covered and you can see them just going, right, ah, I'm going to lie down here in the middle of the mat now. Ah, I think it's like Brian Adams does it, Vincent does it, Scott Norton does it. I'm like, oh, lads. This warrior run is dead. <laughs> You're killing it. There's a murder happening right in front of me. Hogan, you can get up. We can smell your fear. Go home, Nitro. Kicks off with Hogan shouting, What do you mean he's invisible? <laughs> I tweeted that out. <laughs> I, I was watching it. I was like, this is the height of bollocks. <laughs> what do you mean? He's invisible. <laughs> Brother. What do you mean he's invisible? He's going to pay for that. How the hell can he slip through the cracks? Just with spray painting that, it's like WCW, they're not getting their security deposit back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Final segment, actually. Hogan, he cuts a promo in a cage. and then go home, Nitro. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, NWO whites in Hollywood they trust. Okay. I thought it was going insane, but Hogan says he's going to be Goldberg at War Games and get his belt back. It was That is wildly inaccurate. <laughs> 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 he's not even in the match. Um, lower the cage, Smokey Smokey Warrior appears in the ring, sitting down with the giant laid out dead. He's having a great snooze there. Uh, with Bischoff's help, Hogan escapes and they lock Warrior inside. And then to close the show, Bischoff hollers, you cartoon freak. <laughs> You're trying to put him over. <laughs> and it's like, that's a huge burial. But we like we haven't even started the build for Halloween Havoc yet. <laughs> it's like, we haven't started the bollocks yet. <laughs> yeah, totally. Get him, you cartoon freak! Uh, let's get ready to rumble! A special edition of War Games. Three team, nine man War Games. Are you ready? Are you ready to give me 250 grand? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Michael Buffer. He lets off the nine combatants. Team Wolfpack, Nash, Sting and Luger. Team WCW, DDP, Piper and Warrior. And Team Hollywood, Hogan, Brett and Ray. <laughs> One of you lads is doing the job tonight. <laughs> I don't know who it's going to be. <laughs> Was he the best person? Get there, Musk. Come on, somebody throw out a better name for this. Than- Horace Hope. <laughs> <laughs> Panic, you can help me. Yeah. I mean, Beefer, oh, what? Giant. Like- yeah. Giant, yeah. yeah. He did nothing. Yeah, yeah. he was yeah. nowhere to be seen. Yeah. There must have been a reason for it. Um, I'll give you four reasons why uh, Stevie Ray was in it. Spoilers. They need a guy to take a fall. <laughs> number, th- <laughs> <laughs> number two, Bischoff claims they were trying to get him over despite having no spots and doing the job. Number three, affirmative action. 
WCW had a discrimination lawsuit from jobber Bobby Walker looming, which was settled out of court. That's with Sonny Ono and those lads. Okay. Oh, my, the jobber jobs. Who knew? Hey. And number four, it was supposed to be Scott Hall, but he reported himself for the drug policy, so he didn't have to take a drug test, but he was somehow still okay to wrestle against Conan earlier tonight. Oh, fucking hell. Um, kind of, it's WCW is <laughs> the answer. Yeah. Steve, what about the rules? Two men start off and wrestle for five minutes, new participant every two minutes until all nine men enter the combat zone. War Games ends with the first pinfall or submission. Anyone can pin or submit anyone and you don't need to wait until everyone's in. The winner will face Goldberg for his world title at Halloween Havoc. I love these rules. I think there's so much you can do. I they agree. did none of it. <laughs> like, can you imagine a pinfall and then the clock counting down and you're, you know, trying to beat the person running into the ring to break up the pinfall? Oh, that's good. So many that's things. Good. So many things you can do here. Why? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, it's WCW in 98, but they just ruined it. This is the first time there's been pinfalls because traditionally it's a submission only or verbal surrender. Or uh, like a knockout, that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of this is a bit cheaper now with the pinfall, and you okay. get you get out of the shame of submitting or surrendering. Okay. Yeah. But I do like the fact that it means that the match can end before everyone yep. is in, and so it can add a bit of pace to the match. Yep. Urgency. Man, if Stevie Ray came out third and he just got like a big boot, a diamond cutter, boom, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Two minute made of it. <laughs> <laughs> the Sting's determination here. DDP and Bret Hart kick off. Dudes wrestle with ease. Also, I love the shoot subtext that WCW has the most faith in DDP and Bret to go the distance for this War Games match. Like, imagine if it was a like bulldog and anvil starting off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was no other choice for this match at all, surely, right? Yeah. Uh, well, a Piper. <laughs> Stevie Ray Warrior <laughs> <laughs> for five minutes. <laughs> Part of me wants it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Nice. I really hope that there is a universe out there where that happened. <laughs> and how can I get there? <laughs> Reverse the reversal with a lariato, and it's time for number three. Representing Team Hollywood, it's Stevie Ray. Two minutes from the choice, not from when they enter the ring. The two minute interval is more like 90 seconds. Nice. Uh, number four is Team Wolfpacks. This is Sting. Stevie gets battered and bails back to the first ring and Stinger sails over the ropes to join him. That was a great spot. Jumping over across the two rings. Fan-fucking-tastic. There goes Sting! Stinger splash sandwiching Stevie. Then a miss. And number five is Rowdy Roddy Peeper. Four years older than he was after stinking up Kingering 94 with Lawler. He's 44 here. Poke to the eyes, brass nook shot, gasp for breath. All the classics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number six is the total package, Lex Luger. Big smile on him. Must be happy. He's just signed a three-year contract extension. Oddly, when exiting the left ring, Brett gives a hey to Luger. And I was like, ooh, we're doing a bit of shmeen, what's mm. going on here? And Luger has none of that, dispels it immediately by sock. Mm. It was it was a great throwback because on the Go Home Thunder, Lex was getting battered at the end and Breck came out to save him. He's like, yeah, we're, we're like mates. And then Lex is like, you're with Hogan, fuck off. And so they're teasing Brett's uh, face turn. So yeah, really, really good stuff here weird because on the warrior debut nitro a couple of weeks ago he just said lex luger he's not here he's and if it wasn't for sting he'd be dead in a ditch somewhere <laughs> <laughs> we're not mates <laughs> <laughs> number seven is big sexy kevin nash to the most not worth the cost pyro like he gets a yeah. and it's on screen for barely a second batista style yes is it the the pebble dash is it <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Number eight, Hogan just comes in over a minute early and lays out Nash and Piper. What the fuck was this? He has a slapjack in his hand. He does have a slapjack. And he just lays out everyone, including Brett. (laughs) 
so it's just him and Stevie Ray up there. Uh, Hogan goes to cover Nash, but the rings are engulfed in white smoke as the commentators cough. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 which is amazing. hilarious because they're not even at ringside <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're back at the other end of the arena that's just Bobby Heenan being a prick yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, I actually think Tony goes like will you stop <laughs> <laughs> the rings fill up both rings and there he is the warrior and Hogan got him from behind warrior emerges He's beaten down. Smoke again. <laughs> <laughs> warriors disappeared. But the real warrior hoofs it down the entranceway. Then who was the warrior in ring? It was the renegade. Ah, are you serious? Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah, I'll find out all about the imposter warrior. Steve, in- I didn't say he's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I said the fact that they fooled me was oh, awesome. Okay. But why did they bother with this? Because he's magic. Wow, what a waste. And like, clearly there was four smoke machines around the ring. And I'm pretty sure you can hear them going. <laughs> they just like, put Xboxes under the ring. Yeah. They? <laughs> 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 they all get the red ring. It goes over. over. Go home. There, there is no finish here. It's, can somebody explain how this was cool? Because in his head, he's a superhero. Mm. And oh. superheroes have superpowers. And I bet he doesn't watch Nitro either. I, yeah, yeah. You know, I won't look at it back. Yeah. Yeah. But if you were going to do it, do your... P- and then stay. Why do you disappear again? You know, you get beaten down. Was was it supposed to be Warrior in the ring? The yeah, fir- yeah, yeah. Oh, the first time. Yeah. But then you got jobbed out and sent packing. <laughs> and then you ran out. You're running to the ring like a jobber. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look good. <laughs> I don't know what he's trying to do. With the help of the disciple, Hogan hightails it and escapes the cage immediately. Wow, he's such a coward, he forgoes a world title shot. Which he's been banging on about on Nitro for four fucking weeks. It's a great sell, John. There, yeah. That's how scared he is of the warrior. Snarling and unsatisfied, the ultimate warrior, in a really cool spot, rain dances on the fence. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> That didn't sound cool when I <laughs> recapped it. Kicks open a hole from the cage and escapes in order to chase Hogan. Yeah. yeah? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry to point this out, but we've literally just seen him magic out of the ring. Why couldn't the ring have filled up with smoke again? Yeah. And then when it clears, he's behind Hogan. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. How would it shoot? How would they get that to work? The lights go out for five seconds. Oh, okay, right. Or okay. they'd have the renegade beat up Hogan at the, at the oh, first spot. Oh, yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to get really, really cool about it, right, you could have multiple warriors. So you could have the ring fill up with smoke, warrior disappears, then bam, he's up in the rafters, mm. right? Then bam, the rafters fill up with smoke. He <laughs> he hides. <laughs> what just ducks down. And, and then Hogan gets spooked and he goes to run out of the arena and then, wo- and then Warrior is back at the fucking entrance. Smoke like, again. It's, it's like, and then Hogan gives up, goes for a shower, and <laughs> he appears behind him, gets naked, gets so <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. But you know, like, like there's so many ways that you yeah. could have done it other than him kicking out the, the cage, yeah. you know? Um, I, like, I did think it looked really cool just breaking the cage. You know, it's a great aesthetic. Except, sad bananas, he actually injured himself. He tore his bicep, sprained his ankle, climbing out of the cage. Jesus. Should have done the fucking magic. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else in the ring is still selling like death. Five minutes, 18 seconds by my count. <laughs> The lads botch the final spot, DDP dodging Stevie Ray's slapjack and hits Brett, but it just hits DDP and they both bowl over. We're not two take, Jay. We're not doing it again. DDP hits a diamond cutter and wins war games and his shot to face Goldberg at Halloween Havoc. Two! Diamond Dallas! Diamond Dallas! Diamond Dallas wins! It was just not very good. It was. I understand the point of it was to build a warrior. And that was fun and silly and and whatever, but everyone else just didn't look very good. I was not happy at all with the match itself. So what a waste of putting two rings in the arena and a big cage just to get Warrior a little bit more over. 
Did he get more of a birthday? <laughs> less. <laughs> less. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fucking <yeah>. disaster. <laughs> yeah, what what'd you think? I thought it was an easy watch. The pace was really fast. Every 90 seconds, someone was coming out and there was always something happening. It was a bad match. I thought the booking of the match kind of sucked and the finish fell really flat. I definitely wouldn't recommend it other than maybe watch the last minute or two, you know? It's a shame because I was quite looking forward to more bollocks than I actually got. I agree with you. The match was 20 minutes long, but there was no booking in the match. 90 second interval you can't book any spots and then like the first spot was Hogan coming in early and that's the end with uh, Warrior so yeah it was horrible but I thought it was a novel way to get Hogan and Warrior out of the match but they completely save face whilst also hyping their inevitable collision at Halloween Havoc next month in three OSW's time <laughs> 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 um, but yeah which a really easy watch I was going to say like WCW are very lucky that the company and the top acts are incredibly over because they could skate by on that fact and the fact that they didn't have a very good match didn't really matter that much because just the company's over yeah, yeah. yeah. everyone gets a pop the spots mm. get a pop mm. the names get a pop mm. sure you know, yeah whatever Uh, How was it received? Crowd chanted bullshit and pelted the ring and the announcers with garbage because the match and the show in general was poor. (laughs) They're they're getting pelted with garbage. (coughs) (laughs) (laughs) Just gassed them. Uh, Whose plan was this new version of War Games? Bischoff and Sullivan, my son. And this match went so bad, it killed off War Games on WCW pay-per-view. Oh, wow. Like, we will get one more on Nitro in 2000 called Russo's Revenge. Mm. Yeah. Oh, my God. Is that the one where he comes in with the pads and the helmet and Uh, wins the belt? Yes, maybe. (gasps) You don't know. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) Bischoff recounted later that he didn't like war games in general. Or World War Three, sixty, you know, multiple ring matches because you just said it was hard to produce them well and they don't look good on TV. And I was like, yeah, fair enough. I uh, I agree with that. It feels like a gimmick for Southern wrestling house show kind of non televised Dusty Rhodes matches. Mm. Like if you look at the image of World War Three with sixty people in a ring, that's really cool. Then a the match starts. If you actually watch it, it's like, oh Jesus, you know, you can't follow anything. Bit of a cluster. Anyway, <laughs> let's take it to the aftermath. This man, DDP, is obviously on the biggest roll of his life. Good God. Welcome to the aftermath. Mr. OC, what did you think of Fall Brawl 98 War Games? It was, yeah, not great. There wasn't enough good things, and there wasn't enough bad things. I enjoyed the a bit of bollocks with the warrior at the end, but otherwise, there was nothing there to recommend. No reason to watch this show. God, I'm trying to think of something to recommend. Uh, <laughs> Renegade? <laughs> Saturn? <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, final okay, this, I enjoyed, yeah, yeah, I enjoyed yeah. The, the Raven Saturn thing, but it still, it wouldn't be enough to recommend the show. Yeah. Agreed? Um, yeah... The opener is not great. Jericho's cool, but like it wasn't a match. Who reads Silver King? They worked hard, but you know, there's no selling or anything. Saturn and Raven, definitely the high point of the show. And the main event had a bit of bollocks. A totally fine watch. Like, I definitely wouldn't recommend it. You know, go and watch some highlight show or just keep watching us talk about it over and over again. (laughs) Fair enough. Uh, yeah, it was such an easy watch. Two hours, 48, flew by, except for the Buff Bagwell fake injury spot. That was like 10 minutes. That was excruciating. But otherwise, very pleasant. Refreshing to watch non-WWF content as it's less produced, less polished. And so it's more authentic feeling show. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I love meticulously planned spots that you've you storylined out for months and months. But it's nice to see this kind of haphazard variety show too. You know? A uh, lovely array of types of wrestling like Katniss, Karate Bollocks, Cruiserweight Jumping Beans, can I say that? Set Me Free Saturn, Over Delivered, and Batman Smoke and Mirrors, Warrior Garbage. Only thing I'm missing is a Hogan promo, because 
like, just give me some Hulk Hogan, just give me some Hollywood box. Because <laughs> I love him so much, because he just hot dogs, spouts garbage about how he's the man, despite cowardly avoiding a fight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But sure, Hogan promos, that's what Nitro is for. My brother, he was in the States working for summers, and he taped Nitro and bring them back for us. Oh, yeah. Mm. And so he only had, like, three Nitro. And he said, oh, my God, I remember these wrestlers that were gone. Hogan and Warrior and Piper. I haven't just seen them for six years. I don't know. But he hears some tapes, and this is what they look like. And it's all in grey footage. (laughs) (laughs) WCW, his promo that he has there is like, oh, NWO, it's, you ask me all day, what's the question? And then the answer is yes. I'm going to beat someone up real bad on Nitro tonight. <laughs> it's like ah, and then, you know Bischoff's there with his pen. He's gonna keep anybody out or anyone in. You know, it's like oh, it was magic. And for all those NWOites, I'm gonna beat somebody up real bad on Nitro tonight. Ah, Warrior Games is on the books. In the pocket, out of sight. Yeah, how do you think that went? Man? Loads of fun. Yeah. Show wasn't great. The review will slightly be. better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's all right. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, very good. Then it's part two of the five-part Warrior arc done and dusted. So we had his debut on Nitro Fall Brawl tonight. Next up is Warrior's one and only film role in 1993's Firepower. Then after that is his only Nitro match, tagging with Sting, and cap it all off with his infamous Halloween Havoc bout with Hulk Hogan. So yeah, you can watch this again if you like, and the previous 101 OSW episodes at oswreview.com. And that's fuck free of charge, FOC. And if you want to slip us a couple of books, if you're feeling jaunty, if you, you know, if, if there's a lot of white smoke going on, uh, <laughs> yeah, open your wallet. And <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> and five bucks appears, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but then disappears <laughs> and then runs down to your wallet. <laughs> Uh, you can slip us a couple of books at nuggeru.oswreview.com. And we have some cool thoughts, feelings, shapes, colors, uh, hate mongering. Um, I love the hate mongering. Yeah, part. we have some Cadbury Dairy Milk Fizzing Cherry, which is delicious. Uh, some Cadbury Dairy Milk Banoffee Nut Crumble, which is also it's delicious. delicious yeah. And a bit of Coke on, a bit of Coke on the side. <laughs> 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 So it's a goodbye from V1. Take a boo. And OZ. And myself, Jay Hunter. And remember, a winner is you. <laughs> <laughs>